Apologize for not being in my polo, but we uh, this is a Tuesday in football world, and Tuesday's a big work day, especially on a on a game week, which we're at. And um, you know, we're excited. I mean, we got a, we got a really good football team, and uh, that's the thing that you know has got me excited. I'm I'm you know anxious to let these guys get on the field and and do what they do, you know, and that's it's play football. Um, been a lot of hype. You know, a lot of anticipation for our team this season, rightfully so. And, you know, so we're going to get a chance to go play SMU Friday night at SMU. You know, it's only the second time we've opened up on the road. Uh, since I've been here, we opened up 209 against uh, Wake Forest. They were a really good football team then. The thing about Wake Forest then is that we, you know, we had a pretty good feel for them. Jim Grove was coach up there, played on the year before. I mean, the thing going into this week is, you know, not really sure what SM is going to do. I just got it too deep from them today, and it wasn't anything like, you know, uh, what we've been pre predicting, you know, since last January, quite honestly. So that's a concern, you know. So we're going to have to really kind of do a filling out process, you know, early in the early in the game. We know it's going to be a lively, lively atmosphere. Uh, I'm expecting, you know, a full house. I think the fans over there will be very excited to see Coach Morris and what he's going to bring to the table. I know we'll have a lot of people there. And so it's, uh, it's a great atmosphere we're, uh, that we're anticipating. You know, our approach into the game um, <clears throat> from a football standpoint, you know, is, I mean, we're, we're, still, we're still in pain now. We're still in pain from the, the cotton boat. Uh, we've lived for seven months, you know, with a really, really bad taste in our mouth. So. Uh, you know, this is a this is an opportunity to let food taste good and music sound good again because it hasn't for seven months um, in our football lives. So that's it's important to us. It's important to us. We got good guys, good team um, with a good intensity. So we're excited about the challenge ahead. Cherry Hill, Baylor Bear Insider Art. Uh, can you talk about just maybe how you do prepare for a game like that? not knowing for sure what they're going to do? Do you even go back and look at what he did in the high school ranks, or do you look more what he's done on the college level? You know, of course, he, he was at Tulsa. They did a great job at Tulsa uh, with Todd Graham. And, of course, went to Clemson with uh, Dabo. <laughs> done an outstanding job. I mean, he's, he's, a, he's a really, really good football coach and, and done a great job everywhere he's been, even back into high school. So, really, from, from an offensive standpoint, to answer your question, Jerry, uh, you know, we're looking at basically all of Clemson. You know, a little bit of Tulsa back in the day. Uh, you know, Gus Malzahn is kind of where Chad and, and them got together back when, actually when Gus was in high school and uh, Chad was at Stephenville. Uh, that's where he first started out with the system they're running now. And it's, it's a really good system. They do a great job. Uh, they got a QB that can really make it happen. Matt Davis transferred from A&M. Uh, you know, he's a stud. He's good. And, uh, you know, they got they got good people in the right spots, uh, which which is a concern. So we, we know – uh, basically, what we feel like they're going to do conceptually, uh, from a defensive standpoint, of course, uh, Van Malone's coming over from Oklahoma State. You know, he's been around forever, uh, done a great job forever. So, you know, we're we're kind of, you know, basing our our look from an offensive standpoint, it's going going against their defense. You know, what we feel like, you know, he might do. You know, being at Oklahoma State for a while and and being in that system. So that's. That's basically, you know, where we're starting. And, you know, the thing that's funny about this game, I was thinking earlier today and mentioned it to somebody. I don't remember where it was. But uh, 20 years ago, this is Southwest Conference game. You know, and that just, just shows uh, the way the football has changed over the years. But, uh, you know, we're playing them. We're playing Rice as two Southwest Conference rivals. And, you know, I think it's good. I think it's good for the state of Texas. Um, like I said, there will be a lot of excitement in, in Dallas uh, this Friday. <laughs> Dave, I don't think you need to introduce yourself, but I will let you, I appreciate your humbleness. Dave Campbell, Texas football. Coach, uh, y'all are probably favored. I don't have any idea what the odds are. But, I don't either. Uh, uh, is there any reason or does your team know anything about the historical context of this game? I remember when 19... 80 when Baylor won the conference championship, the Baylor SMU game was probably the turning point 
for a Baylor season. It looked like SMU was going to win. They had Mike Ford throwing the ball all over the field. <laughs> they got down late in the game. Baylor was barely ahead. They got down on a Baylor about the three-yard line, and Mike Ford, uh, Mike Ford fumbled, and somebody, Singletary or somebody, Mike Singletary or somebody recovered. Baylor went on, won the game, won the conference championship. And then in about 1980, played at the old uh, Texas Stadium. SMU was favored, and Baylor's defensive end, I don't remember his name, he later assistant coach at Mark High School here, uh, blocked two field goals, and then Baylor won the game barely. So really, it's always been a very tight game. Do you, what would you expect in this game? Well, I mean, I'll, I'll take a... I mean, I'll take a tight game as long as we got one more point than they got. I mean, it's, you know, I, it's it's hard to expect when there's so many unexpected, you know, things out there. I mean, it's anytime you open a season, I mean, you know, with with a new QB from our standpoint, you know, with Seth, uh, it, it's not uh, optimal situation going on the road, you know, with, with the first time you've ever got under center and taken the snap. But... The good thing that's going to help Seth is that, um, you know, he's got good people around him. We have very good offensive linemen. We feel like our D-line is, is very talented also. And so that's something that you can lean on a little bit, um, you know, if, if needed. Uh, you know, we, we would like to think that, that they could help, you know, keep us in predictable situations as far as the chains are concerned. But, you know, the – if I can talk a little history with you, you know, on the Southwest Conference days, uh, I wish I knew that defensive end's name that, that you're mentioning. I thought Jerry might come with it, but, um, you know, that's uh, – they're always tight. Anytime you play an in-state game, you know, we've talked about this a bunch over the years, you know, in scheduling. Um, you know, anytime you play an in-state uh, university, there's always going to be added emphasis on the game. So we – we understand that um, we're going to have to be at our best, have a chance to go over and come out victorious Friday. John Warner, Waco Trib. Arda, has it been any more of a challenge for you to get the team ready this week with everything else going on around the program? You know, I, you know, honestly, John, I, I haven't felt anything. I mean, the thing about youth that's that keeps me going and, and keeps other people going that have the opportunity to be around youth is that they're so – so resilient, first and foremost, uh, you know, uh, forgiving, uh, non-judgmental, and um, you know, just have have good spirits and high hopes. You know, so that that part of it has been, you know, extremely. Um, I don't want to say the word refreshing, but just encouraging. Um, you know, so that that part of it has allowed us to to try to function as normally as possible. Steve Cook, Sick yes, Sports. Uh, Coach, uh, Chris Johnson, uh, he's kind of a slash player now, quarterback and wide receiver. Are you looking at utilizing any of his quarterbacking skills at the wide receiver position? You know, uh, right now, not really. You know, I mean, it, the, the great thing about Chris is that he's just a great teammate. You know, we've got a couple of young kids that are freshmen right now that are really great football players coming out. But they, they don't, they're not really sure how to be a great teammate. You know, because a lot of times when you're the guy, you don't have to be a teammate. You know, and that's, that's what I respect so much about Chris is that, you know, he was the guy in high school. And now he's out and he's been here three years. And, and he's turned into a great teammate. I mean, when we discussed moving him to receiver, uh, which is, uh, you know, can, can sometimes be kind of a dicey situation, you know, he, he's all in. I mean, he was up 6.15 the next morning on his own out there catching tennis balls by himself. You know, so that, that tells you what type of person that he is. He's a great person. He's a great kid. And we think he brings a, a unique ability to us at the receiver position. I mean, he's six, right under 6'4". He weighs 242 pounds. And he, he, can, he can run. You know, he can move. He's fluid. And he's got good hands. You know, the quarterbacks handle the ball all the time. So, you know, we feel like that, that we can utilize him there while still being able to help us at the quarterback position you know, if needed. Lo and behold, you know, it won't come to that. But he, he's our guy if, if we get in an emergency situation. Coach Tim O'Donnell, Channel 25 Sports, with Seth going into his first career start up in Dallas, too, kind of where he's from. How, how do you keep him calm and, and keep his nerves calm in, in his first start? Yeah, I wish, I wish you could tell me. Um, 
that's that's kind of you know the the thing as a coach you know i think it's so important with with quarterbacks is kind of knowing knowing how how to treat them you know how to respond how to get them to be responding to to the proper situation in the proper fashion and you can't really do that until you go through some experience with them you know we've had a little bit of with seth but it's called kind of been called on you know last year smu game called on when petty goes down second half tech game called on when petty goes down and then the northwestern game you know he started um you know and, and played extremely well but you know, it, everybody's different. You know, RG3 is different from Nick Florence, Nick from Bryce, Bryce from Seth. I mean, they're all different. And it takes a little time to, to nurture into them. The, the, the thing that Seth is facing, you know, uh, Petty opened up against Walford in, in 2013, you know, after us winning the Holiday Bowl. Not being back-to-back -back conference champions, winning the Holiday Bowl, finishing 8-5, and, and, and feeling decent about ourselves. You know, that, that's where he opened up, at home. You know, now, now Seth is stepping into opening up on the road in state against a, a new team that's got a lot of energy that we understand have good players and a good system, you know, with back-to-back -back champions, you know, on his chest. So that's that's a whole different scenario. I mean, he's he's got, uh, you know, he's got some feelings around him that, that the rest of us haven't had. So, you know, we've got to do a great job as a staff of um, – Letting him be himself, but at the same time protecting him, you know, early in the game because he's going to be excited. Uh, you mentioned Dallas. Somebody mentioned he's from Garland area. You know, we got a lot of guys from the Dallas area, so uh, there's going to be a lot of excitement in there, and and hopefully our team, you know, through the years have have learned enough, you know, and won enough and done enough to uh, respond in the right fashion at the right time. Coach Browns, Barry Horn. Yes, sir. Dallas Morning News. Yes, sir. I was wondering if you had any reaction to President uh, Ken Starr's uh, decision to bring an outside counsel to investigate the. Uh oh, you know, not really. Um, I mean, I think it's good. Um, I, I honestly uh, haven't read the report or anything along those lines. So I know Ian's back here at the back. He he certainly is a lot more involved in that than I am. I'm trying to trying to get ready to beat SMU, but. Uh, that that hasn't uh, honestly crossed my mind. Eric Mac Engel, Fort Worth yeah. Star Telegram. Art, a lot of people around the state, myself, have been really critical of you for, and Baylor and its program for the way it handled the Samuel Kwachu case. Do you feel like the criticism is warranted, or the reaction outside of Waco and my others has been unwarranted and unjustified? You know, I mean, that's as as you get older, everybody's entitled to an opinion. You know, I mean, I'm, I've never tried to tell anybody what to think or how to think. You know, I've just tried to, to live in, in, in a fashion that, that makes them think a certain way. And that's, that's kind of been the same way with our program. So to ask, answer whether it's warranted or unwarranted, I haven't, I haven't felt that or I haven't thought about it. Coach John Morris, Baylor Radio. Yes, One of your goals, I know, going into fall camp is to, is to stay healthy. You talk about that a lot. It seemed like you've made it through very healthy, which is a little bit of a departure from going in last year. <laughs> John, I mean, we still, I mean, please. Um, <laughs> it, it's, it's a great departure, you know, and it, it's a great thing. Uh, you know, last year when we played our, at the end of the first game, we, all, our top four receivers were out, plus our quarterback. You know, so, um, you know, so you never know. I mean, that's, that's a, the great thing about having 85 scholarships is that, you know, you've got to have a lot of depth because you never know what's going to happen. I mean, you can put on the ticker every day and just, you know, look at the NFL ticker, go across, you know, NCAAF, and you just, you know, you cringe when you see, you know, these guys that put in so much time and effort and soul and spirit into playing and then, you know, I, I watched a high school game the other night, uh, number two from Scottsdale. I don't even know his name, but he was one of their better players. Gets hurt on the opening kickoff, return the opening kickoff, you know, and, and he's done. You know, so it's just, uh, you know, every, every second you have the opportunity to play, you know, you need to be thankful because it's a sport to where you're not guaranteed the next one. Uh, but, but we've been fortunate, you know, up to this point, and hopefully, you know, that'll maintain because – 
I mean, that's that certainly helps determine the, the outcome of football games. It's a healthier football team. We've got time for one more question. Then Coach, Coach Sean Gagey, News 10 yes, Sports. Um, a lot of criticism has come from the non-conference schedule in the past. Um, when I when I talked to you guys the first day of practice a few weeks ago, Katie Cannon, one of the guys, he was one of the guys that mentioned, you know, I don't know what we have to do. We just have to destroy people, you know, beat them by a lot. What kind of statement, this being a Friday game, you know, kind of getting out there a day before <laughs> had most, most teams, being on national TV, what kind of statement do you guys need to make coming out of the gate here uh, to maybe help your cause later in the season? Somebody's missing a call. Um, you know, to answer, to answer your question, you know, the only statement that, that really we have to make is to win. I think you could go back through last season and, and, and look at the way the season went with the teams that got into the Final Four. Um, I don't think it was so much statement games, particularly early in the season, as it was to just, you know, building, building your resume. You know, then I, when it gets later in the season, then, you know, maybe when it gets down, if there's five or six that are in that same category, then I think uh, that's when it might come into play. Although we never felt that way last year. But I, I think, you know, some teams should did, and maybe we should have. Uh, but, I mean, it's so hard to get wins in this business. Uh, you know, like I said, I'll take three to two right now and, and walk out of there happy. Thank you all, all right, a bunch. Thanks, Appreciate it.